There are so many questions that you guys are asking us in every single video and I feel like we owe you an answer at this point. I feel like we've been dodging some of these questions. I think it's probably time. So we have picked seven most asked questions to answer in this video. All right, here we go. Will your B-75 be crossing the Atlantic on its own or getting shipped? Do you have a name picked already? How much is one week of charter going to cost? Where will you be cruising in the world? Where will you take her? What kind of automation system will you be using for AV? Where will you flag your B-75? Have you chosen the home port yet? How long will you stay in the med before bringing the boat to the Caribbean? <sighs> okay. You ready let's, for this? Let's dive into it. Let's do it. It seems like we would have full clarity on what's going on at this point because we've been building this boat for over a year, but there are still so many things we don't know. How long will we be staying in the Mediterranean before we bring the boat to the Caribbean? Ooh, that's an interesting question. No, what's the answer? The answer is we just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So the plan is that we get the boat this summer, towards the end of the summer, if everything goes well and is planned. I mean, we clearly want to stay in the mat and shake it out for, I mean, the plan is for a couple of months. We also would like to bring the boat over for the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. So it's, there's a lot of factors involved. It's a fair thing to say that it'd be at least a month and a half or longer in my opinion. Six weeks we for sure need for all our shakedowns. Um, I think it's probably going to be more like two and a half or three months before we can entertain to move the boat away because we want to be close to the shipyard in the beginning for all warranty works and uh, maybe little things which are coming up we don't know about yet. So that's that's my short answer. Where will you flag your B-75? Have you chosen a home port yet? Okay, like choosing a home port? I have no clue. <laughs> actually um, a flag that's a little bit more defined already it will be either one of the typical suspects like Marshall Islands Cayman Islands Jamaica um, you know these kind of flags or US the simple answer is too early to tell like right now Marshall Islands is seems to be sort of the favorable flag to go with but by the time we get our boat things can change. Panama at one point was the place to register the boat and it seems like it's still you know popular but it's it's not nearly where it used to be. I feel like in about six no not six months three four months is probably when we're gonna have to make that decision and then we have to decide based on where that is where the port is so kind of tough to know and US is still an option, is still something we could do, and it will sort of depend when we get the boat. Tax reasons are related to that, so <laughs> we will just... <laughs> Hello! Hi! You're so cute! Hello! Do you want to be in the video? What's her name? Winter. Winter? Winter. Oh, hi, Winter! Oh, my God! Hi, you're so cute! You are adorable! Yes, you got a little time hanging out. You're so cute! Don't get her pants dirty. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Fighting through the sea lions, you guys. I mean, it is welcome to Marina del Rey. It is a sea lion land and it is loud. We lived in this for eight years. <laughs> we used to it now. We just toned it out. Anyway. Another question we have seen over and over is what kind of automation system are we going to be using? Going to be, are we going to be using for our AV system? <laughs> Victoria. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? What? Nothing? I have no idea. Oh, come on. All I hear is... Yeah? Savant, no Savant. What is the other thing? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I have been trying to stay as far away from this as possible. I don't know why so many people are asking this. I because actually, they want to know. I actually don't even know why this is such a big deal. Maybe you can explain why this... I, just, I don't know. What? Why is this so hard, Rico? Okay, okay, okay. Why is this so hard? Because I would like to have it as simple as possible, as bulletproof as possible. And every time you put any automation system into the mix, 
I think that's perfectly fine in a residential application where you can call your local service location and have, a, have, some, have somebody come out and help you actually out when things not working. When you're on the water, you're in remote locations and you don't have that opportunity. You're relying on remote access and remote help where you're also relying on your internet again. What if that doesn't work? Then it seems to be like a little bit more like a nightmare. So we talking. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's very honest. That's very honest. What well, is very honest? You yeah. know, like, I mean, please comment below. Like, what are yeah, you but guys why thinking? Have but we hang not on. picked one yet. Exactly. So we have our audio system, which is quite good. Um, then we have, Better be. Then we have, of course, TVs, and we want to have a surround sound system in the salon. So technically, nothing different than you would have in your house or in your condo, in your apartment, if you go, you know, with multiple zones of speakers. Every company I've talked to, they're trying to push the brand they represent. So it might be Savant or Control 4 or it's Crestron or it's whatever it might be. I'm trying to simplify this whole thing. I don't need a huge management system which can control my blinds and my lights and my air conditioning and all and this kind of stuff. And why you don't want that? Because it's just more things which can fail. So I'm, I'm like... Is it based on your experience? Based on my experience, every time you have these automated systems, even on production boats, there is one power surge or a lightning strike close by and nothing works anymore. So please give me regular breakers, regular switches, mechanical, not electronic. So now obviously with the audio system, I want to be able to have either the chance on my phone or an iPad to control it. And we have, I think we did the calculation, I think we have 14 or 15 different zones. Uh, if we take the staterooms also into the mix. I'm looking now into Sonos, I'm looking now into all of these control systems we just talked about. And I also want to be able to just control the, tr the, the treble, the mids, the bass. Because when I listen to 70s and 80s music, there's way less bass in there. So I want to be simply, just with a touch of a finger or with a button, turn up the bass. If we're listening to modern music, I want to be able to lower it again so it sounds always good. Any ideas, any suggestions? Are you saying you need help? Yes, <laughs> I do need help and I don't want to overcomplicate it. So um, That's been the hardest thing, yeah. is to not to overcomplicate it. Exactly. So now um, we had a couple of meetings, I'm waiting for the proposals. But in the meantime, if you guys have any idea, please put it in the comments below. So the answer is? We don't know. <laughs> Where will you be cruising in the world? Where will you take her? Everywhere. The answer is for Victoria. <laughs> Come on! I just answered. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I mean. We the... have a couple of we have a couple of destinations okay, already, so right? Let's put it this way. Until we started building this boat. I never had a plan to like, oh, I want to take my boat to Alaska. Oh, I want to take my boat to Galapagos. Now that we're building this, when I say my boat, I mean our boat, but as a human, as an individual. But now that we're building this boat, now I'm like, oh, I want to go through Panama Canal in this boat. And I want to go to Alaska and I want to go to Galapagos. And so, I don't know, we'll start in the Caribbean. We'll see how it goes. We obviously want to have certain charter commitments that we want to do. But maybe then we relocate and go up to Alaska once we can and, and offer ch some charters there for a season. I just don't know. Okay, I have an answer too. So there's one thing I want to do at some point for sure, 100%. I'd like to get a picture of the boat with the Statue of Liberty behind in New York. Aww. So that's one thing. Another thing, I would really like to explore the Sea of Cortez more. Ah. Because that's very interesting, really cool marine life and um, very, very... And funky weather, which would be good in that boat. Yeah, and, it's, that. and it's, it's very little traveled. Okay, next question. Okay, wait, Oh, stay there. How much is one week of charter going to cost? Well, the day got away from us and it got dark, it got cold. Yes, it gets cold here in California. <laughs> A lot of you think it's always warm, but spending so much time in Florida, we're getting spoiled. This is uh, chilly. So, want to make sure that we finish the questions. Oh yeah. We were talking about charter cost. Oh, that's right. That's what we got interrupted. How much is one week charter is going to cost? 
Well, let's put it this way. When we did our budgets for the boat, when we planned to build it, when we tried to figure out if this is gonna be financially worth it, we did our calculation based on the sort of worst numbers, lowest point, low season numbers. So we calculated everything based on $55,000 a week. Now fast forward to quite a bit, what I would say, like more than a year and a half later, mm -hmm. when we started planning and talking about this, it's been longer than that. Now the numbers are definitely higher. And problem is, the boat is not gonna start chartering till about a year from now. So we're still just a little too far away. So we simply don't know, don't have the exact number yet. We can maybe give you like a ballpark? A ballpark? <laughs> yeah, let's put it on you. All right. Ballpark. Put it, on, put, it on, put it on me. So ballpark in the current situation, doing some research, looking at the market, we're probably looking somewhere between 60 and 70K a week. I know it's still a pretty big gap in between, um, but we will know more towards the middle of next year, I think. And then we're going to start marketing anyways. So you guys can get um, your booking in. Do we have a name picked already? This question comes up all the time. No. <laughs> no. Well, no. We, we do have... We do have a list. And, and, the list and the list mostly is from you guys. It is a giant, huge list. Every single name you guys, you guys put in the comments, we have saved. So just to give you an idea, here is a list. Wow. And we have seriously, and we are seriously considering every single suggestion. Holy moly, these are a lot of names. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's been tough. Let's put it this way. I feel like until we see her in the water, until I see her in the water, I'm not gonna be able to be like, that's the name. Like, no, but we need to pick a name before. I think that's the problem. We, yes. we have to decide soon, and we have so, so many criterias of what this name should have and be for the boat. If you want to put still your suggestion in and you haven't yet or you have a new one, so our criteria is what we're looking at. Ideally, it's a one word name. If it's a two word name, it needs to be short. It needs to be internationally representable, easy to understand in multiple languages. And easy to spell. Easy to spell. On the easy radio. Easy to call on the radio. So you don't sound like, you know, as good as it gets when you're sinking. Yeah, just representing the strong nature of the boat, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, just a you know, tiny, tiny amount of requests. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Anyways, so if you have any other name suggestions, please put it in the comments. <sighs> okay, last one. Last one. Last one. Ready? Yep. Will your B-75 be crossing the Atlantic on its own hull or getting shipped? <laughs> I'm glad you got this one. Wow. <laughs> okay, so no. not so easy to answer that question. We just don't know. Okay, so 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 for me personally, I I would love to cross the Atlantic on our boat. Um, the question is, does the timing work out? Because it's multiple factors. It's a good timing, good time of the year to go across the Atlantic. It is a brand new vessel, and I don't know if it's a smart idea with a brand new vessel to do a journey like this. Not just because of the boat and things might break and warranty items, whatever it might be, equipment which fails on you. We do have a lot of redundancy, so we should be okay, I think. The question also is, how well do we know the boat already? You don't want to do a journey like this in the middle of the Atlantic where there's no land around, you cannot pull into a harbor um, to get help, and you don't know the boat well enough. So depending how much time we have to do shakedowns in the Mediterranean after delivery, it might not be enough time to feel comfortable and familiar enough with, the, with all the equipment and all, all the technical spaces to do a, a crossing like that. What's your take on it? <laughs> yeah, throw me under the bus for the last one. Okay, so honestly, I have no dream and bucket list to cross the Atlantic on any boat. It's not on my bucket list. I am more into like remote cruising, 
doing something more adventurous in terms of, you know, that it's, it's like exploration is what interests me. One of our friends uh, who's an amazing sailor, if you guys don't know him yet, his um, Instagram handle is the single-handed sailor. And I'm gonna put it right here. He is absolutely incredible. He's holding a world record for WMPT sailing around the world solo. He did it and it's, he's just so inspirational. Hey Dustin. Hey Dustin. Anyway, he was like, you have the right boat, do the North, Northwest Passage. Like, this is the boat, I'll do it with you. And I'm like, man, with Alexi's like, I'll cross the Atlantic with you. I'm like, man, this is like awesome, so fun. Such a cool content, it would be such an adventure to do. But there is a whole aspect to it, which is like, do we have a month essentially to do this whole journey take out of our schedule with Naughty Styles, with everything else we have, with bearing, just, do we have the time? Sorry, LA fire. Do we have the time to do it? So I think it's all gonna depend on when we splash, when we take real possession of our boat, which is two different things, right? Once bearing says, okay, we're good, we've tested her out, now it's you guys, we take possession. Do, how much time do we have to do this? And then we would love to be at Fort Lauderdale Boat Show with our boat next year. And if that happens, us doing this crossing might just be not enough time to make it. So there are all of these factors and it's just too freaking early to tell. That's so it. we just don't know. <laughs> There are lots of questions that you got put in the comments that we are able to answer. We're going to try to do some more of these and answer them. Uh, this is literally the burning questions for us that we're still not able to 100% give you an answer on. And one more that always comes up and it wasn't on the list that I want to mention is when are you guys opening up the books? When can I book my charter? So I would say maybe we'll open up for 2025 soon. I would say within the next couple of months. But the 2024, end of 2024, we're still not sure how that's going to play out because of all of these factors. So stand by. I would say by spring, we should be able to open up the books for everything. Exactly. Okay, see you guys in the next one. Hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, cool, next episode's cool one coming up. So um, yeah, something really exciting we're doing. Very interesting. We are searching for something and we're taking you guys with us.